Now, folks, let's get over to our man, Mr. Tim Wood, as we do every Tuesday and Thursday. And don't forget, folks, you can reach Tim every trading day and get his newsletter at ord, O R D, hyphen oracle.com. That's ord hyphen oracle.com. Tim Wood, what's going on? All right, I sent you over a couple of charts, uh, or actually four charts. We got and, them cooking. Uh, yep. Yeah. All right, we want to take a look at the first chart, which is we kind of. Uh, started looking at this probably a couple of weeks ago, if not longer. Yep. But it's the uh, NYSE summation index, which is the top window. Yes. And w we keep talking about it. Back on October 27th, uh, you got a reading uh, minus 817. Anything below minus 700 is a selling climax. And the, the whole scenario for this indicator uh, to trigger a bullish uh, situation, it has to go below minus 700. Then in around two months, it has to go above plus 1,000. Yep. When it's done that, uh, it predicts the bull market going forward. Not every day is going to be an up day. Right. Uh, but, but it does suggest 2024 will be up. And again, on October 27th, we had minus 817. And this is uh, Friday's close. So it's not today. It's okay. Friday's close. We have 920.70. Oh, my God. Unreal. Yeah. So, and today so we get a good day. So we're going to add more today. Yeah, we're going to add more today. And plus, you're going to add more tomorrow. Right. Tomorrow's the 27th. Oh. So you, you basically yeah. you got two days uh, to get, you know, it's, you know, it's, it's a thousand exactly. Um, Magic number, not really. I mean, yeah, probably no, I'm with you. To right, right. Thousand fifty would probably qualify for it. Um, so, but it's around a thousand, you know. And, and the last low was eight hundred seventeen. It got below minus seven hundred. So we started off with minus eight hundred thirteen, uh, and we already rallied to nine hundred twenty. So probably we've met the rules. But officially, I guess you need to get her up plus sure. one thousand. And most likely, that's probably going to happen this week. And if it happens this week, then there's probably, I don't know, high percentage probably in the 90s that next year will be an up year. And this chart goes back to 2007. And the blue lines show the times when this indicator hit below minus 700. Okay. And the red line shows the time it hit above 1,000. And if you notice, they all came at major lows. And we had this back in 2022. Um we got a uh, October uh, low. I forgot what it was. It was like about a minus below minus one thousand. Then we had a rally into January and hit above one thousand. And, and hey, and Tim. That, so the summation index that was Sherman McCollin's deal, right? Is he the one that invented yeah, that? Your, yeah, Tom and uh, Sherman McCollin. Actually, his wife created it. Really? Uh, okay. Yeah, his his wife is a mathematician. Wow, uh, Sherman's okay. wife, and and so she figured out all this stuff, and and Sherman, um, you know, I, I guess they both did it, but she was a mathematician in the family. I'll put it that way. No, I know because so. going back like twenty twenty five years, I had Sherman on a few times. Then he passed the baton to to Tom. You know, right, right, okay, wow, man, yeah, and so it's still kind of a family affair. That he has a. Uh, a he has Tom, and he has another son too that uh, do stuff for the McCall or the uh, okay. uh, McCollin uh, newsletter. So their whole family's kind of into it. But yep. uh, the the wife of Sherman is kind of behind the scenes, and she's the one that kind of figured out the numbers how all this works. And how cool is and that? And it works well. You can look at the chart. You know, they all came at a major low. Oh and, yeah, it's amazing uh, so. looking at this chart, seeing how fast. When it does happen, that it can actually get up there. I mean, it's, 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 but it makes sense because at those lows, the market's cleaned out, right? I mean, that's, that's, yeah, that's the market's the, cleaned out. Yeah. And see, what you, you need is, you know, it's a sign of strength off these lows. Yes. If you look back at the uh, 2007 decline there going into 2009 low, you had a bunch of uh, selling climaxes, readings below minus 700, but you never had a uh, sign of strength off those lows so the market just kept going down right uh so right so you have to have the sign of strength to really confirm there's enough you know buying pressure in the market to, to say yeah we're in a bull market and so it does appear that 
And so, you know, next year is election year, too. Yeah. So yeah, most likely they're not going to kill the market, you know. Uh, yeah, and well, and interest for, rates are going the right way. I mean, that's, you know, yeah. I, I can I can see, I mean, interest rates, you know, we're on the other side of the cycle. And that's a big deal, man, because, you know, the cost of money is, is everything for, you know, not only public companies, but for, you know, families, businesses, cities, states, the, all of the above. Right. Yeah. Yeah, it. it's all of the best. So, so they're they're doing whatever. I think you know the, the people in the government. I guess are trying to make the economy look as good as possible, where it really is or not. You know, as long as there's money supply of money in the market, you know, it's 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 going to drive it higher. But it's next year looks a good year. So yeah, um, we can we can go on to chart two. Yeah, let, let's let's uh, let's yeah, let's do that. Okay, good. I got chart two up. Yep. All right, sure, too. This is a short term, so that's a bigger picture. And, you know, we'll, you know I'll come on Thursday again, and uh, most likely I'll, I'll update that chart to actually be Wednesday's close, because when the up this is on chart number one now. Yes. Because they don't update these um, readings till well after the close. Right. So this is Friday's close, 920. So today we may be. We may right be at the thousand level or pretty darn close to I it. I know because uh, it, as even as we're talking, Tim, you came on and the S and P's are up twenty. Now we're up twenty four point five. Okay, so they're running it into the close out here too. Just stay right there, Tim. Yeah. Stay right there, folks. Tim Lloyd, Tom O'Brien, we're coming right back. And remember, this program's archived, folks. So if you're in your car and you want to look at those shots, okay, don't look at them in your car. Bottom line, get home. Hit the archive. You're going to be able to go through all these shots as Tim and I, uh, as Tim explains these shots to you. Dow's up 189. Nasdaq's up 99. S&P's are up 24. Tim and I are coming right back. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Tim Ward, Tom O'Brien. We do appreciate your growl on the problem. And don't forget, folks, you can get Tim Ward's newsletter by going to ord-oracle.com. Okay, Tim, I have the second shot up here. All right, so this is just a short-term view of, of what is kind of going on. Nothing real bearish, but uh, the bottom one is, uh, is the uh, five-day trend. Yep. The average of the trend five days. Next one up is the 10-day trend. And uh, last week, uh, th this is current as of today, but in general, we're in the bullish category for the uh, Five day, you like to see around 1.4 or higher. We're a little below like 1.25 when I did the chart. And the next one above is uh, you like to see it around 1.2 or higher. You know, we're 1.17. Yes. So nothing real bearish, but all that gray or that pink area across the, the chart there are times when both those uh, readings got into bullish ter ter territory. And they hit there last week, and we're kind of into a uh, consolidation, I guess, phase. I mean, we're not really rocketing up, but we're not rocketing down either. We are touching a new high here, but uh, it looks, you know, it looks good. You know, what can the market, can we have a minor pullback here? Maybe, but it's not set up for anything significant. And well, pullback. what's going to get interesting, uh, Tim, too, right, no, is that the, on the, what, on the 20th, we had, now when that drops off, that's going to change that quite a bit because. We're going to have 3.69, right? Uh, that, that, now, that's helping us at this particular point. When it drops off, though, it'll get intriguing, right? <laughs> right, yeah, it, it drops off. But, you know, we may have another, you know, uh, a shakeout. Oh, know, yeah, where, yeah, no, no, I'm with you. I'm with you, yeah, right, right. You know, it kind of, the market kind of regenerates itself or re-energizes itself. Yes. And you get these uh, shakeout one-day wonders, and, you know, everybody panics, and everybody try to get through the exit door. So, you know, yeah, it's true when that three-point-something drops off, it's going to affect the 10-day and the 5-day. We'll get to bearish territory, but the 10-day, he gets around 0.9 or lower. A lot of times that's kind of a danger level. Okay. But it stays around 1 or higher, you know, in rallies, you're probably fine. Uh, what I'm trying to point out here, there's nothing really... No, 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 I'm with you. I just wanted to, I just wanted to bring... Re really, really either extremely bullish other than uh, the bigger time frames because of the summation index looks really good. No, no, but, for uh, sure. I, I just, a little fuzzy. Yeah. I just so. wanted to bring it up for the listeners so they can really start understanding how this works because it's always cool, folks, when you know you get a big one or a small one and it's dropping off. It, it be, and you know what's so cool about what you do here, Tim? You can project going forward. That's what I, it was really cool. Do you know what I'm saying? It's like, okay, man, yeah. do you know? Yeah. Yeah. Right. 
I count forward too, so I want to see what's dropping off ten days ago or yes. five days ago. Yes, exactly. And it kind of gives you a clue what what may happen. So, but you know, this is you know, there's nothing to write home about. It. Just no. you know, sometimes there's something to write home about. And sometimes yeah. they're not. No, I'm with you. In this particular case, I'm yeah, with you. Okay, so I'll go lot. to chart number three. Now, chart number three, all this is is kind of a momentum indicator. It measures the up volume, down volume, yeah. and the advanced decline. So it kind of shows you what the market's doing. And the bottom window is the GDX uh, up-down volume percent on a 50-day average. So it's a big average. Yes. And so long as it stays above zero, which is all the blue area, okay. it's usually uh, normally in an uptrend. Uh, as of today, when I print this chart, we're at 5.52. And then, uh, you know, it gets away from zero to uh, looks like about 12 usually stays in that range. So we're kind of in the center of uh, the bullish range, I guess you might say. Yes. Uh, it's it's uh, nothing real significant. It gets below zero. Normally the rally is kind of coming to an end. Okay. Uh, most of the time. And, you know, plus five in that range, you're fine. Uh Nothing, again, to write home about, so that looks pretty good. Okay. Uh, uh, so that's the short term. And what I really want to kind of talk about is number number chart four. Okay, I have it up. All right. This is a really kind of an important chart. This is this current rally that's going on right now. It really kind of needs to continue. And the reason why I say that. If it kind of fails here and goes back down, uh, those two indicators, which is the bottom indicator, is a cumulative monthly advance, or no, it's up down volume. And the next one up, up, second chart up from the bottom is the monthly cumulative advance decline. Yes. And you need both those uh, indicators, the advance decline and the up down volume, to get above the mid Bollinger band. And usually when it gets above the mid-Bollinger band, it usually stays in the mid-Bollinger band because it's a momentum indicator of volume and advanced decline. Yes. And once it gets above there, it stays there. If you notice, uh, they can trend for years. Uh, right. Matter of fact, it picked out the, uh, the January or the 2012 high. It stayed bearish all the way into 2016. Yeah, so four years. For four wow. years. And we've been actually kind of bearish since 2021. There's been pockets of of uh, short term runs in, in the uh, gold market, but not lasting runs. This right. indicator predicts the runs that could last a year or two or three. And how how and close are we now, Tim, to the advanced decline line getting in the middle? Are, are we close to it? Yeah, we're, we're actually we need to get uh, the the advanced decline is uh, the the second window up from the bottom yeah and it needs to get above the bollinger band oh i see it now yeah. i didn't see it i see it i got it you get up you get this is if you're looking at this chart folks he has an arrow right to it i should have saw that okay cool i got it i see it yep yeah okay and uh, the bottom window is the up down volume uh so it needs to get above the mid bollinger band too so let's flip to the top chart Okay, the the top chart is uh, the monthly GDX. And I drew yep. a, a line connecting the highs going back to uh, 2021. Yes. And so, you know, this is the old Weisskopf deal going on here. To get through that line, you need an SOS, which is sign of strength. Right. And so, I'm, you know, we te the more times the line is, uh, trend line is tested, the more times or the more likely it's going to bust through. All right. So this is the fourth time we're testing it, or it depends how you count it. It could be fifth time you're testing it. So uh, most at some point we're going to bust through that line. And, and when you do it, uh, all those, uh, the, the Bollinger Band, two indicators down below, most likely will get above the Bollinger Band, and probably you're going to start a run that could last, Several years, or at least a couple, at least a year. Yes. Uh, so I'm thinking this is kind of lining up to like a 2000 bottom. If, if you remember back. Then. Oh, I remember you know, that stuff. Uh, Praise yeah, the Lord! If this is 2000 there, bottom, there. we're all going to be happy, was, man. <laughs> yeah, it was great. So I'm thinking that's why I'm looking at the bigger picture here. Something's lining up over the next month or two. That if the market remains basically relatively strong and it keeps moving higher. All those Bollinger Bands will be exceeded. Uh, the bottom two is most likely will have a sign of strength through that trend line on the GDX. And if that's the case, then uh, probably over the next year, maybe two, 
uh, the, the, a bull mark we haven't seen, probably haven't seen for for years. That's probably in the progress of, of happening right here. So right, because with, t- with Tim's talking about possibility, that will that happen or not? There's some ingredients that suggest that it may. Yeah, and with Tim's talking about, folks, that's when we went from 252 bucks to 1100 in the gold market. You know, and yeah. Tim and I did get it. Thank God. <laughs> yeah, we did. We did. It was fun. It was so. fun, man. Well, listen, man. It's always a pleasure, Tim. You have a great one, safe one. Look forward to speaking to you on Thursday. All right. Thanks, man. Okay, stay right there, folks. Come right back.